Hey, what's up, guys? This is T-Bone here. Welcome to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes, where we do a Tuesday event preview. And this is going to be the last event of the season, Electric Storm. So if you still have any coins remaining, now's the time for you to decide what you actually want to get. And just a quick reminder, a way for you to get to the previous uh, heroes that you can use your coins on is if you go into uh, the the season uh, page. And then in there, you can see there is a tab for ultimates. This is where you can see all the previous heroes, including the current one. And you'll be able to... Um, you'll be able to make uh, your decision then on whether or not you want to um, get your, uh, you know, get your missing cards here. And I uh, just want to say hello to everybody. Welcome to the stream here. And let me, let me see something. I'm not seeing your chats appearing here. Although I see that it is, I see your chats appearing, but it's not showing up in my stream green chat box so please uh excuse me one second while i um take care of this real quick i just want to make sure that um everything is i want to make sure that everything is as is working correctly because i'm not seeing the i'm not seeing the text here so hello everybody who who's um joining us here give me one second real quick um chatter should be fine this is okay okay so it's it's now showing up all right it's it was just a little bit slow all right apologies so anyways so here is where you can get your um here is where you can get your previous heroes so we will also have a conversation afterwards after this video on which one i think is actually worth uh, getting and so just also before I get started, just another reminder for those of you who are joining, uh, I am still doing the weekly giveaways. And so what you can do is um, I'm going to get, I'm going to kick kickstart the giveaway bot. What's different this time is if you've already typed in your, um, your command, it's just not going to show up in the chat. Uh, just because this way we can, um, this way we can kind of filter out a little bit on the, um, you know, we can we can filter out a little bit of the noise, all right. And so if you don't see it, don't worry. It's still it's still gonna be registered. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get get started here. And uh, if you're a subscriber, then you're going to get an extra ticket to uh, for potential to earn it. But any, everybody has a chance to win, all right. So I've uh, kicked I've started off the shirt. Just if you want it to uh, and uh, white light. White lighter pat, thank you for subscribing. Uh, so if you wanted to, um, you know, enter for a chance to win, just type in exclamation mark raffle. All right. Again, you're not going to see it pop up in the chat just because I've um, hidden it, just so that uh, it will not be too uh, distracting for the chat itself. Okay. So now let's get down to business. Let's take a look and see. So uh, the pondering pigeon, you're talking about uh, the deck itself. Turn one is going to be really, really bad with this deck because of the turn one um ability right so let's talk about that so this is the second event in a row where they're actually changing the deck mechanics a little bit at a time and not sure if it's something you guys noticed but they have started introducing things that um that are available that they have started introducing things that um basically are always permanent and so if you guys actually, you know, one thing I just realized that if I hide it, maybe I'm not sure if it actually would um, register it. So, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and turn it off. So if you didn't see it, I'm going to, I'm just going to turn that off. So if you guys were using this, <laughs> okay, lots of people actually have, uh, have put in the raffle here. So let's talk about, let's talk about, talk about the cards here. And um, in terms of, the deck itself. I actually think it's not too bad, right? So we have the ring royalty. This is the ultimate form right here. And this card is kind of a, it's kind of like an interesting concept where it, it's kind of like the United Taurus where you destroy gems and then create uh, power gems. But the thing is, it doesn't actually it doesn't actually destroy that many gems. Anyways, I'll talk about this and we'll talk about, um, 
we'll talk about this and we'll talk about uh, what um, what I think about it afterwards. Okay. And so this is the, the ultimate form. It is a beast killer, fire beast killer slayer. And what we have here is a battle skill that will last throughout the turn. So usually when they sit until the end of the turn, that really just means until the attack actually happens and then you've um, actually uh, successfully registered a damage on the boss. Whenever the hero and also when it, uh, the boss counter goes down, okay? So whenever this particular card or Abalonzo the Jaguar, which is the event card, uh, El Toro World Champion, which is the Master Collection card, whenever those three cards destroy gems, uh, however many uh, gems are destroyed, um, they'll create the corresponding number of power gem threes, okay? And so th th this card can work for itself and also uh, other cards can work with it. And, you know, and then um, the, and the thing is, this will stack with the ultra rare card. So if you have the ultra rare card, uh, this will also stack. So you have more uh, power gems. And then this what it'll do is it also create more power gem force on top of that. Two plus one for every 200 uh, beast killer intensity. And then uh, itself destroys three gems. So it's not a big gem destroyer. So it's not like you're going to create a lot of power gem threes on its own. Uh, but it, it will stack with other cards. So it's supposed to add up. Okay. And at the beginning of every turn, depending on the amount of uh, health you have that's going to count towards uh, the amount of attack boost to your um, to, you know the amount of damage boost to your to your team as well and so it's maximum the maximum ability that you're going to get is basically a hundred percent attack boost to all beast killers so that includes any any um, you know any card that isn't necessarily the fire anyone that has a beast killer bonus essentially and it's also a healing card, right? Uh, not healing card. It's a it's a revival card. Okay, so this card actually uh, will give you a revive, but it does get blocked by flatline. So once per battle, instead of dying, uh, revive and heal for fifteen thousand a hero recovery. So this will actually revive you and fully heal you. And this is what I'm talking about. They have a new thing now where they have this passive. Uh, last time it was basically something that gives you a permanent immunity to blind. Now they have this thing called Passive Haste, which will give you the battle skill uh, fully charged at the beginning of the battle. This this actually changes the game quite a bit. And uh, so this is something that I think is going to be worth dis discussing. And so uh, just kind of taking a look here. So uh, we've got uh, Michelle and uh, Kieran and Matt, as well as uh, Martin and, and um, Catherine McIntyre. How are you doing, everybody? Welcome here. Uh, so if I can only get one of the cards, would I get the Ultra Rare or the Magic Collection card? Honestly, if I were to get only one of the two, the Ultra the ultra Rare card only works for this deck. So it has less utility outside of... Like if you can get only one of the two, it's not one that I would, I would go after. And uh, so Ari, you didn't manage to see the live stream, but you did catch it last time. Well, that's good. Uh, so you know what? I'm not registering any of this. Um... I'm just taking a look at the entries here and I'm not seeing anybody getting picked up here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. Okay. And I'm going to cancel this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart this. I'm, apologies for anybody who has already, uh, who already tried it. But for some reason, when I opened it, when I opened it up, I'm just not seeing any um, I'm just not seeing anything getting picked up. So go ahead and um, enter again, even if you've entered already in the first place. Uh, so let's see. So you, I, you remember I mentioned that this week's deck was going to be a Beast Killer deck. It is indeed a Beast Killer. Uh, so the way you can also tell is you can take a look at the, uh, you can take a look at the, the Proving Ground store and it will actually um, give you a hint as to what battles, uh, what uh, killer skill is going to be available next. Uh, so Karen, you're the new, uh, so you're a Q, you're the one that joined the guild today. Welcome to the guild. Okay, so that was the that was the ultimate form. And the Master Collection card and the Ultra Rear card, they are um they they are broken up into El Toro, which is the Master Collection card. So El Toro World Champ is the Master Collection card. And this is the card that will give you uh, power gems. So it gives you four power uh, gem fours and then one more for every 200 intensity. And then it destroys three non-fire gems, okay? And so this card by itself, is going to be more useful than the ultra, uh, the ultra rear card, to be honest, if, if I'm to be honest here. And um, what... What I think is that this is a card that can at least give you more uh, more damage output. 
okay? Uh, because if you have just the Ultra Rare card, but you don't have the Master Collection card, or you don't have the Event card, then it's not going to be useful. And Body Slam, so this is the card that also gives you attack boost. So the more Master Collection cards you have, uh, the more attack uh, output you're going to have in this team also. And again, this also has a passive haste that will start with a battle skill fully charged. So you basically can uh, immediately start by activating, you know, and getting four power gem fours, and then uh, destroy three fire gems, and then your ultra rare card would then create additional power gems. So you're going to be able to fill uh, the board with power gems with this. And then we've also got a uh, the ultra rare card, which is uh, Ash Risen Phoenix, All right? And so this card is the, the ultra rare card that will give you additional power gems whenever either uh, Abalonzo the Jaguar or El Toro world champ or ring royalty uh, destroy gems. So it doesn't work for itself. So the ultra rare card doesn't work for itself. And we've seen this mechanic before. We've seen this kind of card that actually um, doesn't do anything except for the, the cards in its own deck. And so Gideon, uh, yes, the best I would imagine is going to be three Master Collection cards, one Ultra Rare, and one Ultimate. Because the Ultra Rare card really is just going to give you more Power Gems, but it doesn't. you don't really need more Power Gems at some point. Okay, At some point, you don't really need more. And I would go as far as to say maybe the best is going to simply be four Master Collection cards and one, ultra, uh, one Ultimate form. Because what you're getting is you're getting attack boost from your Master Collection cards. And uh, you are getting also, uh, you're getting Master Collection cards and you are getting, um, you're getting, you're getting damage boost from Master Collection cards four times. And then eventually you're going to be able to fill out the board anyway. And so I really think that the Ultra Rear card isn't necessarily a, um, it, it, it isn't necessarily the most um, important card. In my opinion like i don't really think that this card as a card on its own is going to be as how would i say is like if you have it you would you should use it but if you have multiple master collection cards it's probably better to use that okay uh it's just that i don't i don't like cards that that basically do nothing but support another card like it has zero like if you have just the ultra rare card by itself you can't even really use this except for the um, the fact that you can you activate a battle skill uh, in the beginning of the turn, in the beginning of the battle, but it doesn't do anything, and you get revive. Okay, so this card is really just good for the revive if you have just this card. So if you have only, if you can just use the coin uh, to buy something, do not get the ultra rare card. Okay, do not get the ultra rare card, and um, just the master collection card. Now, Kieran, um, I can see that you've are uh, you're trying multiple times. As uh, you just need to uh, use it one time, and then you'll be entered once. Uh, you can only get one entry anyway, so there's no point in uh, doing multiple times. And I see you're in there, so it's okay. You don't have to um, put more entries in there. So right off the bat, my recommendation is to say if you have just one, uh, if you can only buy one hero, do not buy the ultra rare card. Um, because the Master Collection card is going to be a lot more worth it for you. Even on its own, I think it's going to be a, that much more... Um, well, it is a lot better than the Ultra Rare card. I would say it's almost infinitely better, but um, it's still better if you can get the full deck. So if you have an opportunity to get the full deck, that would go. I would go for that. Okay. Now, the Event card is also um, a card that has some utility, and this is Abalonzo the Jaguar. So this card will create three fire gem twos and it destroys two non-fire gems okay so it's it's a the it's an okay card it's not like that great uh the only reason why this will be okay is because if you cut if you get this card and you have um you know the ultra rare card then it'll work a little bit because then you'll you know you'll create three power gem twos and then your ultra rare card will create two power gem threes for a total of five power gems, but it's still not a great combination, right? It, it doesn't have any more opportunities to create more. Uh, it does have the uh, passive as well so that you can activate it at the beginning of the turn. But as, as a whole, I'm not a fan of this card on its own. Okay, so this card is not a card that I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of. Uh, just because I think that, again, you know, if you're going to be a gem destroyer, then be a gem destroyer. Like, destroying two non-fire gems doesn't really do anything. Same thing with the, the Master Collection card. It really doesn't do anything um, because 
you really what you're what, what what this deck is saying is they're going to give you a minimal amount of uh, power gem uh creation because they stack and the way that they're trying to make this interesting is say well we're going to create gems by destroying some gems but then what that does is they're giving you a, a a whole package like this is a package deal you're only getting the benefit because the whole deck works together but then if you start tearing it apart well it's not really a gem destroyer at all, right? It destroys three gems, which doesn't really do anything. And you you can't really use it as a good gem destroyer. You can use it as a, a gem spawner, but then it requires 200 intensity, which is a lot for one additional power gem. And so I've personally really disliked uh, anything over 100 intensity for power gem spawn, just because I think it is way too... Uh, way too big of a requirement it makes it it makes it way too small okay and so um it, it's just not something that i'm a big fan of so let's see what are some of the questions that, that, I, that i'm uh, missing here so the ultra rare the ultra rare card is mainly necessary to get the ultimate form yeah so it is definitely not a card that i would say you should craft for right if you get it in the in, in the vault then you get in the vault it's just that it's not something that I would say, hey, you know, if you have a uh, just one single seasonal coin to use, what should you go for? You should definitely not go for that because it is going to be useless on its own. Uh, one thing to consider about this event is uh, the card would also aid to counter the chaos buff. So chaos is not a big deal for me, right? So, okay, so the event card dispels armor. So armor, if you can deal enough damage, it's not... it's. It, then it's it's fine like armor is one of those things where you can also use ray ray also dispels armor so you're you're gonna be fine there it's not a big deal right because as long as you can deal in that damage you can get you can bypass it. it armor really is um basically a threshold that just says if you can't deal enough damage then you you basically register zero but if you can get over that damage then you basically will get full damage recorded so it's it's either zero or everything and so it's 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 really not that um that bad even if you can't counter it, you can still uh, get around that. And so El Toro dispels also armor. And then let's see, the ultra rare card dispels Alacrity. So Alacrity is turn delay. Nobody uses turn delay in Slayer events anyway. <laughs> so it's not really uh, an issue here. Ring Royalty will also dispel Alacrity. And the, the only thing that remains is the support card. So the support card is uh, other otherworldly... I can't say this word, Nahuatl. <laughs> I don't know how to say the last two letters because it's 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 basically TL, and so I'm I'm I, I'm apologies for not saying this properly. But anyways, this is the support card, and what this card does is it gives you uh, a heal. So whenever they destroy gems, you heal a little bit. So like once every three turns, you get to do a three thousand percent heal recovery. Again, they've basically made this card one of the worst, like the most worthless support cards outside of the event deck so if you don't have the support card with the event deck it's essentially useless and so i'm not a big fan of this either so i'm not a fan of the support card and also the the event card personally it's passive is that it also starts the battle with the battle skill fully charged but like i said you take the support card by itself you can do basically nothing so what what is a player supposed to do when they get a you know when they get two or three support cards and no event card you can't do anything you it doesn't it doesn't really do anything except okay i, I misread it it spawns at least eight fi fire gems okay so there it is i i totally missed it i thought the battle skill was that it basically does that so i take it back it does at least create fire gems so whew. <laughs> i thought that it didn't and if that ha if that were the case then i would i, I would be, I, I don't know what it would do because it it, it it surprised me when I saw that, but I misread it. So the card itself actually does create fire gems, so at least it's okay. Whereas the passive ability only works if you have at least an event card with it. And so uh, if you don't have the, uh, you know, like it, it at least gives you the ability to create gems. And if you have the, if you have the um, event card, then at least you could you could heal. And so Con William Deep, the support card is good for those who lack fire relics. Um, I guess what that does is because it has haste, now you basically have ability to create fire gems on turn one. 
And so what that allows you to do is that allows you to then deal more damage on turn one so that you could at least try to get a little bit more damage in there uh, to hopefully get your 15%, 10%, 5%, whatever it might be. Okay, and so that's the full deck. Overall, my feeling about this deck is that if you can get the full deck, I think you'll enjoy it because I think you're going to get a lot of powers, uh, you know, off the bat. Okay, right out, right out of the gate, you're going to get a lot of uh, damage output. But that also means that if people get the full deck, then everyone's going to have the ability to deal a lot of damage on turn one. So everyone's going to be able to take down the boss immediately. So there, there isn't a whole lot left for everyone else to see spawned bosses. And so I think what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up seeing bosses by people that don't have the event deck. And so we're all gonna be fighting over those. Not sure how it's going to really impact the uh, the dynamics of the event itself, but I'm gonna get into that because the event event structure is also changing. I'm not sure if you guys realize that, but they're changing the event structure. And I don't know how I feel about it yet. So I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's see. Um, Magic Man, dusted for next fire. Even. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Monkey Spanker, welcome to the stream here. And you think that the, the deck is on point? I think that it has. It's interesting, but I am not. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel because of the event uh, structure. Do I see a lot of one turn kill? I see. I see a lot of one kill for sure. Like I think if you do a three key attack with a 15, 13 times Slayer bonus, a uh, 900 times, uh, you know, uh, killer skill. I, and, ten, and 10 times empowerment, at least for the first few days, it's going to be a simple one hit kill for sure. Okay, uh, so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open a couple of tiers here. So luckily today was the last day of uh, Guild War, so I was able to get some gems there. I think that might push me to be able to get to tier four, but I'm not really a big fan of the event card anyway. So the only reason why I would want this is to try and get the full deck oh my gosh come on there you go so here is my tier one and my reward is 50 evolution coins <laughs> 50 evolution coins i you know how i feel about the evolution coins right okay so that's tier one uh let's go to tier two we'll just forget that ever happened i'm really getting this for the seasonal coins anyway but it's not like it really matters because if I can't get one or the other cards by tier four, then I'm only going to have one coin and that's really not going to help me much. So here's the guaranteed support card and I guess Skybound. So that's an, that, that's an ultra rare card back in the day. <laughs> All right. And let's see. So we get the support card, we get the hammer and a Skybound. So I think I can go. Oh, no, I can't because I do 14 and 25, that's 30. I, I can, I mean, I don't know if I want to. I can do tier four, <laughs> but that'll basically wipe me out because I think this is 14 and then the, uh, the next tier is gonna be 25, 100 gems, and I'll have 25 and something, right? So here's the relic, feline, uh, feline cowl. And whenever I get the relic on the first pull in tier three, it basically guarantees I don't have the, the card, right? And so, hey, another 50, uh, I get another 50 coins. And I got the event card on turn three or on tier three. So, so far, nothing but the guaranteed cards, right? So we'll, let's see. So how many, how many coins do I have now? So I have basically, um, 36, I'll be able to collect two from here. I'll, I mean, I'll be able to collect six from the event, so technically I don't need the fourth tier, but I'm just gonna go for it, right? Let's close out the season and see if my last pull of the season is going to give me a card or not, all right? Uh, so Mr. Mung's saying the curse is broken. No, I didn't get anything. I got, <laughs> I got my guaranteed, um, I got my guaranteed relic on turn on, on tier three. And so this is Alabonzo the Jaguar. So that's the event card. And, and this is the other guaranteed relic. And so I guess that's probably going to be it for me for this, for this uh, four tiers, right? 
Yeah, and then that's basically everything else. So let's take a look and see what we got. <laughs> it is it is so sad. It, it, it just really is. Like, all I see in my chat feed is how many people got the full deck by tier 3. It is extremely sad that I've gone through now two full seasons without actually pulling a single gold uh, gold card. All right. And so that was that was kind of sad. And we're just going to leave it at that. So what this leaves me is basically multiple support cards. I mean, I could actually I could actually feel a team with event cards which I just spent a lot of time trash talking, right? Because it is not a great card. It really isn't. But let's take a look now and see what we can do. So I also don't have any Fire Beast Slayer, okay? So that's the thing that I'm missing. Of all the Fire cards, uh, the one I'm missing is Beast Slayer. So if you take a look at my Beast Slayer cards, or Beast Killer cards, these are the four I have. I don't have anything from the previous event and I know I, I, I really don't, I really don't have really good luck here. So basically I can now at least say I ended uh, with my very, very last poll of the season. Uh, it ended exactly the same as it started. And so unfortunately it is what it is. And so I'm going to have to sort of figure out what, what we can do here. Okay. So for me, I'm going to be able to activate the, the battle skills in the beginning, but the problem for me, right? So here's a problem for someone who doesn't have the full event deck. Like, I'm not going to waste, I'm not sure if I'll waste my coins getting the, getting the master collection card of this particular deck. Like if I were, that's the one I would get because it gives me at least a, a damage boost, right? If I were to get, get one, I would at least put that in because that could help me with the beast killer. Like it's too bad that I won't not be able to get the ultimate form, but Someone like me, what can I do? Like, what can I use this deck for? So this gives me three Power Gem 2s, okay? So at least I can do that. So at least I have two of those. So I can create a few Power Gems. But, like, honestly, I have much better Power Gem spawners than this. So for me, it's, you know, um, it's the fact that I could spawn the Power Gems at the beginning. So what I could potentially try and do is, um, like, I probably wouldn't do this. I would use, you know, like, <laughs> I have other options. The best option for me, I think, is going to be a card that gives me nuke. So either this, so like this will be a good option, right? Despots of Despair still is a good nuke card. It's not the best. It's not as good as Freedom Fighters. It's not as good as um, as Hard One Gorillas. Uh, but it's still it's still a good card. I mean, for me, uh, I think it's a powerful card. And then some of the other options I'm looking at here. So Bonafide Brawlers is an arcane killer, and what this does is, um, it it's not, I mean, it's a good power gem spawn, spawner, right? It, it gives me six power gems, and but it's not a great arcane killer. Like if I were to, if I were to to really be creative, one thing I could consider doing is I might consider just saying, look, I don't have beast killer, I don't have beast killer skills, and so what I could do is I could say I'm just gonna go with arcane skills, kind of like what I did. If you remember what I did here uh, last event or last fire slayer event when it was arcane what i basically did was i, I basically used uh, this combination and it's still gonna be i think this is still viable because i'm in a fire event so in the fire event i'm getting the 10 times bonus at very at the very minimum and i'm not getting the slayer killer uh, bonus but i'm not getting it anyway and so instead, what I could do is I could potentially boost up my Arcane Killer skill and I could try and uh, compete there. The only problem is um, I'm not going to be able to do this fast enough. My problem is that I am going to be at best turn two because I'll be able to get my Power Gen spawns from this. And what... I will be able to do is I will be able to get my power. Um, I'll be able to get my my attack boost from my circuit break Calaria, and I'll be able to do some damage here. But I'm going to be competing against teams decks that are going to be able to activate on turn one. So it's going to be a it, it's going to be a challenge for sure. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Take a look at the comments here. A lot of people are saying like you know very bad luck. I, it's become a thing. Like this literally is. This literally has become a meme for me. Okay. Like people are talking about it like a verb at this point. Like hey, don't. Uh, you know. Uh, I got t-boned. Used to be that that verb used to be like oh I got educated. Now it's like oh I got bad luck. It's 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 a meme. <laughs> 
Uh, so let's see. And so Sylvie T, you got the craft and you got the full uh, first full deck this season. So Sylvie T, congratulations. I think you're going to enjoy this. Uh, Gregor G, welcome uh, to the stream. Thanks for joining from Aust Austria. And let's see. So we've also got uh, Kung Fu and DB pulled nothing all season long either. You had to craft both cards this event. Yeah, so I crafted last event. So I I don't have any left. I was kind of hoping to get one. I was kind of hoping to get one from this time. I, I mean, like I have dailies. Not that I have the gems for it anymore, but dailies is an option. So I'll, I'll see. Uh, like I have coins. I, I've got coins for it. So it's, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, so let's see. So Arjun, is this deck comp uh, worth spending compared to the previous one? You know, so the previous Light Commander deck, if you had multiple copies of the Ultra Rear card, then you were good. But to me, I actually felt like it wasn't... I, I struggle. I struggle with the last event deck and because I had a basic one. So I, I crafted it, and then afterwards, I just felt like I, I, I didn't know what to think of it. It wasn't as fun just because it is a deck that you... So, so the nice thing about the deck is that you were able to get power gems every turn if you have um the master collection card so it gave you power gems every single turn but it just something felt off something felt off about it i didn't quite enjoy it as much i mean i had other cards to go with it whereas this deck here uh this event deck i feel like it has more potential even though it's a slayer deck i kind of feel like it's a, it has a, a bit more potential but what I will say is, of all the decks that we've seen in the current season, uh, this last one and this particular event, these were the two ultimate forms that I would actually recommend compared to the others. So that that's that's how I feel about it. Um, but I, I just, I don't know just yet, but from what I've seen, turn one, like, you're going to be able to get really good turn one damage. Like, you're going to be able to um, activate all of your skills on turn one. So if you don't have great relics, like, you're gonna you're gonna be golden there, right? And so it really changes the way that you would play. But how does it work afterwards? So that's the thing, right? So if you think about it, the the, the deck itself it has great turn one, and then turn two, turn three, you're not gonna be able to do anything. And then because you're you're most likely going to activate your 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 you're most likely gonna ha gonna want to activate your your battle skills. Okay. So here's the thing to remember: this mechanic essentially forces you to activate your battle skills on turn one and you're going to get a bulk of your damage on turn one and then turn two turn three you're not going to have anything and then turn three is where you're going to have uh sort of like you know your refill of all your power, power gen force so it it is it is very different than how you normally would play okay and so this is going to be a turn one burst damage and then turn three, you're going to burst more. And then it's just going to keep going um, as you build up your intensity. But as you get hit, if you don't heal, your attack boost is going to go lower and lower and lower. So this attack boost is very dependent on your health. And so the, the, the more you can keep your health at 100%, the more you're going to attack. So it's actually interesting because it's, it's a deck that over time, you're going to deal less damage. Okay, you're actually going to deal less damage over time if you can't heal. So if you don't have a card that heals you, your attack boost will continuously decrease. And in situations where you're hitting against a boss that deals a lot of damage, and sometimes like, you know, like what we're used to is as we go higher and higher in our intensity, or as we do more, um, we do more damage, or at least we sustain it. This one is actually opposite. You're going to do the most damage your deck can possibly do on turn one. Okay, uh, I shouldn't say that. Because you're gonna get more power gems as the go as the turn goes on, so I think it'll balance itself out. But that's that's more like that's really long term because you're looking at 200 intensity or more before it actually makes a difference. So up until 200 intensity, turn one is the most damage you're, you you should expect. So that's something to think about. All right, next thing I want to talk about is the event structure. This is something that I'm not sure people rec uh, noticed, but I noticed it when I read it. And it is something that I'm not sure that I'm not sure how I feel about it. And so Tana Anderson, thank you so much for your subscription. Uh, so let's see. If you take a look at the news feed, all right, um, there's a couple things. So there's a, there's a good thing that uh, they have brought in, and that is you're going to be able to get this uh, new thing. I think it's going to be a, it's a belt, and I think it's going to be a relic. And so if you take a look, like earning that belt, so at the end of the event, you'll be able to earn your very own Sintel de Camp. Uh, campions, campiones, 
with its uh, rarity based on your final division placing. So the better you place, the better uh, relic or better belt you get. Everybody will get one. Uh, so it's not like you're going to be left out if you don't actually um, place well. So at least there's that. But they're, they're, they're changing the Slayer structure again. First update, they're making it so that the prestige bosses are going to appear less frequently, which is good. Uh, it's good for a lot of people uh, who, who don't like that. So uh, Vishwajit, thank you very much for the subscription. Right, so it at least allows you to hit your own bosses without worrying about prestiging up if you can't. Like for me, this event, I'm probably going to avoid the prestige bosses like a plague. <laughs> and the second update is that there, the, the Slayer boss damage has been adjusted to have parity with damage dealt by commander bosses. I don't know what that means. Uh... Because I thought that the commander bosses hit pretty hard. And so I guess we could campaign. Oh, thank you very much, Maya Queen, for um, for the correction. So I think that uh, that could mean the bosses hit harder. Like It was kind of nice when it didn't like one-shot you for a while. So I'm not sure that's going to change. But, it, but, but to take a look at this one. How to be the last one standing. This is the one I'm going to read out. Okay, be the last one standing this event by earning TKO coins from the solo bosses. For this week's event, all players will receive TKO coins for all solo boss finisher objectives. These tokens will determine how you get placed into the daily solo leaderboards the next day. Everyone will start out in the same league and be promoted based on their performance on solo bosses. Holy smokes, every day we're going to have to compete now. <laughs> I, unless I'm mis misunderstanding this, unless this is a separate leaderboard, this is going to reset every day, and it's going to depend on your daily performance. And so if you don't play one day, doesn't that mean that you're just going to be at the bottom of the... Or, you know, if you don't play as much in one day, doesn't that mean you're going to end up placing in uh, the very, uh, you're going to be, you're going to end up placing in a new leaderboard that doesn't give you as much rewards? Like, I don't know what this means. I'm not sure if it's going to be a separate one or if it's going to be for the leaderboards that we see. If it's a separate one, then that's okay. Okay, people can fight for that belt as much as they want. If this is going to impact our weekly, like our, our actual uh, week-long um, leaderboards, then I think a lot of people will have a problem with that. That's that's my concern. But I can't really decipher exactly what they mean here. But when I read it, that was my first concern. And higher rarity solo bosses are also going to drop more coins. So prestiging is going to be the way to go for this event. So yay for those of us who won't have the event deck. Uh, that is going to mean... Uh, no belt for me <laughs> or at least i'll get a belt just not a very good one so we'll see so this is going to be event where i'm going to have to try and be creative and see what i could um what i could get but my recommendation here is if you were thinking about what you want to do with your coins uh i would say focus on the master collection card for this event if you want to compete right uh, for me, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to fill out my team, my 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 light team, with a second ultra rare card because the ultra rare card is the one that gives you the additional uh, noble killer boost, and it could, uh, you know, it could work. I think uh, is it no? This is the one, right? This one will give. Oh, it could give you uh, something for Slayer, but. But the problem with this deck is that it's so slow. Like you really need it to go up to, to six stacks and you need to consume it. So you need to have the ultimate form. You need to have uh, the, the ultra rare card. And I guess really it's just the ultra. I think if I'm going to use this in the Slayer deck, I'm going to just use uh, the ultimate form. So I'm not really going to need the ult ultimate form. I feel like this deck was really just good in its own event. Like I don't really imagine this being a good event Uh I'm not, I don't imagine this for a good deck outside event, whereas this this Slayer deck, I think actually has potential. And so if you were if you don't like anything else, get the Master Collection card. Don't get the Ultra Rare card, okay? Get the Master Collection card first. Uh, if you have uh, both cards, uh, if you have enough to get a full team, 
and you don't have a good Fire Slayer deck, I think this is going to be a good one. I think you're going to see uh, good power output from this deck. I think you're going to enjoy seeing all those power gems on turn one. You can just activate it right away. I think it's going to uh, be enjoyable, so you'll be able to really compete really well. Uh, and as far as whether or not you should chase deep for it, like I say, with every single event, there's really no reason to go really deep. There just really isn't that 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 big of a reason to. Um, but the most the most powerful form of this deck that I could think of should be ultimate form and four master collection cards. That's that that's that's my that's my current thinking. Uh, so let's see, uh, white lighter pet. How many coins do I have right now? I have uh, I have enough to get the the card. Uh, as soon as I collect three more, so. If I had gotten, if I had gotten at least a splinter back soccer, uh, then I thought I had that card. I, I guess I don't. Uh, so that that would give me the the six, the, basically the, the enough coins to at least craft one. And so if I were to craft one, I would go ahead with a master collection card. That's what I would do. And then I might try the dailies just to see if I can get lucky there. In terms of the collection cards here, so we have a uh, uh, tech lieutenant Velda. So this is actually from the deck that had the beast. Uh, killer so the previous uh fire the fire tech team and then uh, the other two cards this is actually not a bad card to have actually uh so bacon baron the bacon baron is actually a really good card because what this does is regardless of your killer skill this card will actually give you a damage boost okay so it increases the slayer attack up to 600 percent of the hero's recovery and this was a card that we used to pair a lot with uh you know um admiral what was it <laughs> Admiral Applewood, okay, the support card of this event, and we used to get quite a bit of damage uh, output out of this. I can only imagine now if we add this to a card with a killer skill on top of it, and you get additional attack damage on this, this this feels like it actually could be a good card just as a creative deck as well, so you could, you could probably use that. And if you don't, if you don't uh, use up your coins, you can also choose to let it convert to loyalty coins, as a Magic Band has already mentioned. Splinterback Stalker. This is uh, currently in the sh currently in the Proving Ground store, and I believe this card will be available on Saturday when the uh, when the sh when the uh, Drill Fist Depot refreshes. So I can at least get that if I need the coin, but I'm not going to go go hard after that. Okay, and so uh, of all of those cards, I think the Bacon Baron is not a bad choice. Uh, Splinter Backstalker is okay because what this does is it's a trap card, so it will give you um, it will give you power gems, and then it applies that skill to other um, cards. So you will also get power gems. So it's 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 a pretty decent uh, card actually. And if I get this card, then I'll be able to form the ultimate form uh, for Marionetta, which I which I do enjoy. So Daniel, welcome uh, from Poland. Thanks for joining the stream here. And so. Unfortunately, nothing really to show for it, but I think that from a um, from the season's perspective, being the last event of the season, I think that this is probably the more versatile deck of the five that I've seen. It is quicker at three turns, so it has three turn cooldown, and the only limiting factor is that the damage output is only going to be as much as your health, but it stacks. So for every Master Collection card, <clears throat> excuse me, that you put on the deck you're going to get another 100% attack boost. So you can basically get, with the team I talk about, with a master collection card, a four master collection cards and one ultimate form, that is 500% attack boost for your team. So that is going to be a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that is going to be a, a, a pretty formidable, formidable um, damage output, which I think is not too bad. So Arjun, uh, can I suggest to you, how do you grind gems? So. For anybody who is a free-to-play player, the places that you want to grind gems are going to be your ranking. Okay, so if you if you every time you rank up, you get 50 gems, and for every 50 levels you get, you get additional 200 gems. And so the more that you can grind your levels, so that means do your do your uh, farm farm your you should farm your um, missions daily, and the best one to farm if you're not farming for any catalysts. Is going to be at the regular main campaign uh, for one dash two. You see, what you should do is I I don't do this as much as I should. No, oh, gosh. Why? No, Siri, go away. 
Uh, so what you should do is go to 1-2 because for basically 5 stamina, you're getting the same, um, you're getting 200 experience for 5 stamina. And that is the best ratio for you to rank up. So that's the best way. And the other place you should be focusing on is between events. Make sure you hit the silver trial boss. There's always a chance for you to get gems. And obviously hit your... Um, this is going to be the Slayer event. So every Slayer event, you're also going to have the Bounty Hunter. So do Bounty Hunter so you can get 750 gems there. And that is pretty much it, except for, you know, like trading your gem gifts, etc. There's really not a lot of really good ways to get gems. You earn a little bit of gems every event. And that is pretty much it. So if you don't have VIP, that is pretty much it. So you, are, you get your rewards. But really, the most reliable way is to rank up. Ranking up is going to every 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 time you rank up you get fifty and every uh, fifty you get two hundred, okay. And so let's see, is there any other questions there? Uh, so Karen, can I help you after the stream with the deck? Oh yeah, so just uh, message me afterwards, okay. And so Forge Boss does give so Forge Boss gives you the best XP sing like you know for a single fight, but in terms of farming, depending on the amount of uh, Depending on the amount of stamina you have, you can also get quite a bit there too. So another place that you should definitely be farming as as Arjun also on the, uh, the Parting Pigeon set is the Forge Boss, right? So you go to the Forge Boss and just hit any one of these. And they haven't changed this in so long that even though they're called Extreme Bosses, you're going to get a lot. I think, I forget. Let's take a look. I can't remember whether it's 2,000 or 1,200, right? So if we just go in with my light team right now. Let's just let's just take a look and see how many we will get. I was like, Karen, you can you can message me. Just uh, just message me in the guild chat, and I can help you out there. House of Pain, thank you very much. I try, <laughs> I do what I can. So for those of you who have watched me from the beginning, know that I started because I just never had anything. Right, I just never had any any uh, any options to to compete. I, I never was able to buy any any of the cards, and so I, I would you know try and do what I can. The te the game has evolved so that I couldn't really use a lot of the old cards that are easily obtainable, and so it is kind of hard to try and uh, do the same kind of you know comparison. So sixteen hundred is what you get, but I think that there's still opportunities for me to at least say well. The, here are some of the other options. Like they, they may not be as easily obtainable. Like they're not as like free as I, I, I used to, um, to be able to do. But you know, my what I what I enjoy is still being able to say, hey, look, here's a, a couple of support cards. Here's some event cards, and uh, you can do some damage here. But with their, with their push on you know. On prestige for slayers and on overkill in commanders, it it it's just kind of harder. And so I do understand the difficulties there, but you know, I think if you put it in a different perspective, as long as you can enjoy the, the game itself, then it really doesn't really matter too much, right? So I do what I can. And of course, I'm always looking forward to uh, hearing your feedback as well. So let me know what uh, event decks you're using and let me know what non-event decks uh, you're going with and uh, let's compare notes. And so I will try and see what I can uh, provide for you guys in terms of uh, ideas. But for me, I think that the at the very minimum, I will leave you with this. This deck does have a activation order. Okay, so this deck does have an activation order. And I know this is a question that everybody always asks. So let's talk about this now. And I will repeat this and make sure you share this with everybody you know who might have a question about it. What is the actual activation order? So the first card that you should be activating is ring royalty because it applies to itself okay so activate this card because this card is going to um the, the thing is like when you activate these cards uh you're you're going to you're going to already do do gem destroy so 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 unfortunately um that's not going to work right for, for itself so you're going to lose a little bit but ultra, the ultra rear card will also do the same thing and so i would say actually ultra rear card needs to go first activate your ultra rear card first then you activate your ultimate form second because the, the ultimate form will destroy gems. Then you go ahead and activate your master collection cards. Okay. So again, ultra rare, then ultimate form, then master collection card and everything else. Don't, don't do it the other way around or you're going to lose out on the amount of power gems. So on turn one, 
if you have the full team, again, ultra rare card first, then ultimate form, then master collection cards. That is the order that you must activate in order to maximize the amount of power gems. If you do it any other way, you're going to lose out on power gems and you're going to lose out on your maximum damage. Not that it's going to matter a whole lot, but it is, you know, it is always good to optimize. Uh, so let's see. So the Spawn Ring Pigeon, the Spire is also good for gems. That is a... Uh, another good place thank you for the reminder there so for those of you who may not be aware if you might be new to it uh so every spire level at some point they also have and i haven't done this in a long time uh they do offer some gems in some levels as well so that's also another good place to go so if you are short on gems just make sure you hit your spires every day so that you can reach some levels that give you 100 gems uh, sorry, Mayan. So yeah, there's no cap on intensity. Ben Rutherford, am I going to do a video ranking this season? Yeah, so I, I, this will be the third time I do a ranking, but I will tell you right now that these two, this one and the one that just passed, are going to be my preferred uh, teams. I'm not really a fan of the other three. Another person that has been giving really good uh, feedback on this is Con William Deep. Uh, he has been also a really good resource for sort of like, you know, determining whether or not the teams are good or not. So I would also recommend uh, hearing him out because he does give really good feedback and also good suggestions. Uh, so Brian, uh, should you use your coins to get the Master Collection card for this event or craft the Prime Pursuer? Um, so the Apex Predators... Uh, the Apex Predators, that's the water team, right? Let me take a look at here. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember this. <laughs> if I remember correctly, people didn't really like the Prime Apex. That's just me. But if you have just a single coin, if you can only craft a single card, it's always better to be able to form an ultimate form, Okay. Uh, but if you don't have another fire slayer, fire beast slayer card or fire beast killer card to use for this event, the master collection card isn't a bad choice. It's just that now you're going to be left with, you know, no, no ultimate forms. Uh, so I would say, Brian, if you plan on buying the daily packs, maybe wait and see if you get what you need. I would say if you can get the ultimate form for this event, go for that. If you know that you will not be able to, you can't. Uh, then generally I would say ultimate form over single card, but this event card, uh, this master collection card has utility. So that, 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 that would be my recommendation. So you have to decide. And so let's see. So, yeah, so I think that's going to be pretty much it for me for this event here. I'm going uh, for, for this and let's see. So the timer has gone and let's go ahead and pick our winner before we go. And so the winner for this giveaway is going to be announced in the chat. So I'm not gonna give it away just yet, uh, but here you go. So say, mm, I'm assuming this is gonna be pronounced like French. So say you, uh, go ahead and uh, send me a message on the network chat app, and then I will collect information from you for the giveaway. Just a, just a quick reminder, uh, because of the way things are right now, it does take a little bit longer for shipping. Uh, expedited shipping, unfortunately, is not really a good option because they charge as much as the shirt itself for expedited shipping. So it is going to take a take a little bit. But go ahead and uh, reach out to me, and uh, we will work it out. Okay. Uh, so network chat app, uh, Karen. If you download, if you look up uh, network uh, with the th number three, you'll see a chat app. This it's a it's an app that is connected to. Uh, to the game as well. So you can see here network chat. If you click on that, it'll actually take you to the chat. And if you don't have it, then it'll also allow you to download it. Okay. And so that is going to be it for me. So hopefully it has to be, hopefully this is clear, right? So what to expect this event is, uh, I think the event card, I think the event deck is pretty strong. If you can get it, master collection card over the ultra rear card. Activation order is going to be ultimate, uh, ultra rear, ultimate form than everything else. And in terms of the event here, the thing we're looking forward to is whether or not the solo leaderboard reset is going to be just for the belt or for the event itself. It's, if it's going to be for the event itself, then it's going to probably cause some problems. Uh, but if it's just for the belt, then I think that's okay. I hope it's just for the belt because then that would be at least similar to how they've done it in the past. Uh, so I don't want to cause any panic, but uh, I just don't want it to be grindier than, uh, than it has been already. Okay. So... Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Again, thanks for joining. And uh, uh, you know, the the giveaway will will continue to run for, you know, for the next foreseeable future. 
So if you didn't get it this time, just, you know, try again and uh, wish the best of luck to you all. All right. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good event. And I will come back with my recommendation video sometime this week. And if I can, if I manage to find a team that works for non-killer skill decks, then I will share that as well. All right. Thank you. Take care. You've been great as always. See you next time.